The 2017 season for the Giants was a train wreck. It was a nightmare. It was a complete and unmitigated disaster. A team that made the playoffs the year before that some people had potentially Super Bowl aspirations for end up being so bad due to injuries, the coach losing the locker room, the Eli Apple crap, and all this other stuff that they end up in a position where they get the number two overall pick in the draft. That's a disaster. So... The head coach is fired. The general manager is fired. Pat Shermer is hired as head coach, who is hired by Dave Gettleman, the new general manager, who enjoyed some success in Carolina. And you look now, and the big question was, where do the Giants go from here? Do they still believe in Eli? Do they still feel like they can contend for a championship under the current construction with Eli Manning as their quarterback. Is the time now? Or is it time to prepare for the future? And as much as we talk about the dynamics of the Cleveland Browns and what was at stake for them in this draft, this is honestly perhaps a seminal moment in the history of the Giants organization, at least for the next several future years, because this was a major decision to make. This was a very important philosophy to work through. Are you going to get behind a 37-year-old quarterback that you've experienced great glory with in the past, with the two Super Bowl titles? Or are you going to look at him and say, well, we already ended up the second worst team in the league last year. Eli's 37. How much more do we want to hitch this wagon to a potentially fading star? And I felt like throughout the whole process, like, The Browns were going to take a quarterback at number one when all was said and done. The real draft began at number two, especially when trying to reconcile what their philosophy was going to be. Well, this past week, we got that answer. Dave Gettleman, Pat Shermer, and the New York Giants clearly still believe in Eli Manning. They are worried some about the future, yes, but they are trying to get better around Eli now to make one more run at the thing. And ultimately, only time will tell whether that was the right decision or not. I will say this, is while a lot of Giants fans might be okay with that, and a lot of Giants fans might be happy with that, don't sit there then in a year or two if this does not work out, and this is proven to be a folly, passing on a young potential franchise quarterback to try and win here and now. Don't sit there and go to social media and the internet and bitch and moan that Gettleman did this when he should have done that because a lot of you supported him and supported this. Now, I get it, though. Because in the NFL, unlike other sports, specifically the NBA, there is parity. You get the right influx of talent. You get the right breaks. You have the right things happen. You can go from worst to first in one year. It absolutely can happen. It's happened before and surely will happen again. So there is precedent there. There is logic there. It is understandable. And it is also understandable how it can be hard to admit that one era is over and that it is time to go to the next era. And I can also understand how hard it can be when you're in a market like New York to go through a full and complete total rebuild. It can be very, very hard. But you also have seen the Yankees do it and come out the other side uh, very nicely. So it can happen. But when you look at this, I think over the last week or so before the draft for sure, everybody was pretty much locked in on Saquon Barkley as going number two to Penn State. I don't think that really surprises anybody. I think everybody anticipated it. Everybody kind of saw it coming. And it makes sense. If you're going to go with Eli, then one of the things you needed outside of better protection for him is more playmakers. And you really needed a three down difference maker in the backfield. And Saquon Barkley should be able to be just that very early on. So when you look at the board and the way it played out, you understand in some ways why the Giants went with Saquon Barkley number two. They felt like he was the most explosive playmaker on the offensive side of the ball in this draft, and I don't disagree with that. And they felt like this was the best way to protect an aging Eli. And only time will tell and see if that's the right decision or not. They passed on the opportunity to draft a Sam Darnold. They passed on an opportunity to potentially trade back out of number two. So Dave Gettleman better really hope the philosophy works, the philosophy is right. Because if not, it will be a decision that could come back and haunt the organization for years. 
I look at the rest of the Giants draft and thought it was actually pretty solid. They got two other guys on day two that I had round one grades on, and Will Hernandez and Lorenzo Carter. And I'll say this for Hernandez. He comes in, he starts immediately. He has a massive upgrade on the interior of that line. You had to better protect Eli Manning. You brought in Nate Solder in free agency. You bring in Will Hernandez via the draft. You have gotten better on the offensive line, which is exactly what needed to happen. And it also makes sense when you draft Saquon Barkley number two to double down on that pick by drafting an offensive lineman to help Saquon Barkley as well, who as a byproduct is hopefully going to help Eli Manning. And as far as Lorenzo Carter in the third round, he's a first round athlete. Is he a first round football player? Huh. There were reports questioning his commitment to the game and how hard he was really going to work and how much he really loved football. But if he's there and he's right, the Giants may have gotten an absolute steal here in round three. Um, when I look at their draft, their best pick to me was Will Hernandez. When I look at the value combined with the philosophy of helping Saquon, protecting Eli, I give that pick the nudge over Lorenzo Carter, even though ideally or realistically it was a bigger steal compared to my big board. I feel like Will Hernandez has more important impacts immediately on that Giants offense and is badly needed. Uh, in terms of the worst pick, like I said, I didn't really have a problem with any of the six guys that they took. I liked what they did in this draft as an entirety, as a whole. Uh, the only thing I might question is taking R.J. McIntosh over Maurice Hurst. If there was one pick I would question, that would probably be the one. And we're talking about... Uh, a three technique with upside being taken ahead of a three technique with perhaps a little more pass rush upside in round five. So how bad is that really? If you're in that place where your fifth round pick is getting questioned, you didn't have yourself that bad of a weekend. In terms of a pick that could surprise, I look at B.J. Hill from um, the third round. You get this defensive tackle who people were getting higher on as the process went along. I feel like he could be a future starter on the interior of that Giants line and feel like he could outplay this draft position. Um, looking at the entirety of the draft and the philosophy, I was a bit surprised in a way that they decided to go in all in like they did with Eli. And I don't still see the wisdom in that. I feel like if you're the Giants, you don't know when you're going to get into this situation. You don't know when you're going to get into this opportunity where you have a potential franchise quarterback fall into your lap, I feel like you have to take him. Or if you don't, you must find a way to trade down and accumulate additional draft pick currency either this year and or next year. And the Giants did not do that. Also taking Saquon Barkley number two overall. Look, I love Saquon Barkley as a prospect. He was my number three guy overall on my big board. But there is still... A lack of financial sensibility taking a running back number two overall, knowing that if you pick up his fifth year option, you're talking about paying a running back close to $20 million, which is vastly above what the current market is for the running back position. Also looking at it, Saquon Barkley going that high. Yes, I felt there was a gap between him and guys like Ronald Jones and Darius Geis and Nick Chubb and Rashard Penny and Sony Michelle. But the gap wasn't so huge where I could justify paying him X million of dollars more than these other guys. If Saquon Barkley was the only clear-cut stud running back in this draft, then I'm on board more with them taking him number two overall. But I do worry that this team is long-term going to regret Sam Darnold being there and not taking him, especially when he ended up going to the Jets. I also worry about them taking Saquon and tying so much of their salary cap space to him in the future, and he's at a still devalued position in the league. The draft in recent years indicates it's becoming more valued again, and that's great. Warms the cockles of my heart. But it's not the reality right now. It just isn't. And you had the number two pick and you took a running back at a less than marquee position, which is what the running back has become, in a deep running back class. And I look at this and I say, if you really wanted to protect Eli Manning, then why didn't you just take Quentin Nelson number two overall? Or if you wanted to go with best defensive player, why didn't you take Bradley Chubb? who to me were both slightly better prospects than Saquon Barkley. Um, I just don't know. I do think Will Hernandez is a stud and a future pro bowler. Sleep on him all you want. Uh, they traded Jason Pierre-Paul for basically Lorenzo Carter an additional pick, so long term we'll see how that works out. Uh, what it comes down to with the Giants draft is if you believe in Eli Manning, like clearly Pat Shermer and Dave Gettleman believe in Eli Manning, 
You have to be pretty happy with this draft because you got the biggest impact offensive player arguably in this draft in Saquon Barkley, um, and you got a stud interior run blocker and pass protector in Will Hernandez. You got a round one talent at the beginning portion of round two. You've got to feel really good about that. And even with my concerns about them taking Saquon number two and what they passed on or what they maybe could have done, you know, if they didn't like any of the quarterbacks, then you don't like any of the quarterbacks and you have to trust that your evaluation is proven correct and validated down the road. It's just an incredibly risky place to be in. It really, really is. And then maybe the offers weren't great or maybe they were just asking for way too much to move down from number two, but it felt like a real missed opportunity for the Giants. If you are trying to help out Eli now, you could have still done that by trading down this year and perhaps getting more picks this year and next year. But they did end up with three players that were on the top 20 of my final big board. So on that hand, on that note, it is really hard to knock them for what they did because it still feels like they did really, really well. I like the picks of B.J. Hill and R.J. McIntosh. I really like the pick of Kyle Lalletta in round number four. I thought there was good value there at that point. He comes in and he competes with Davis Webb. Could he someday be the heir apparent to Eli Manning? Who knows? Worst case scenario, either him or Webb are the long-term backup. And again, Lalletta was a fourth-round pick. And with some of the other players they had taken, it was worth this chance right there at that moment. I don't really have any complaints about the six players the Giants took. I liked every single one of their picks. I thought they got good value. I thought they took good talents. I thought in multiple cases that they got really good value in steals. This was a good initial foray as Giants general manager for Dave Gettleman. Like the anti-Jerry Reese in a lot of ways, where occasionally hits on somebody big and then it's a bunch of... <laughs> this feels like multiple hits. And if you use a basic minimum standard of saying... Did you get three guys that could really produce out of this draft class as a measurement for whether that draft is successful two, three, four years down the road? I feel like beyond question, the Giants will affirmatively be able to answer that question by saying we've got Barkley, Hernandez, maybe Carter, Hill or McIntosh. They might have for sure four guys that end up being long-term producers. So that could make this a really, really good draft for the Giants. You just wonder, with not knowing how the future can play out, in a couple of years, are they going to regret passing on a Darnold, passing on somebody like a Josh Allen, a Josh Rosen even, or a Lamar Jackson? They were in a position, they could have made it happen, where they could have gotten any of those four guys, and they chose not to. And that, as much as anything else, will be the ultimate measurement. Because Saquon Barkley could be a stud, multiple-time Pro Bowler. Will Hernandez could be a stud, multiple-time Pro Bowler. They could get Carter, Hill, McIntosh, two of those three guys to contribute. And it ended end up being a really good class, and yet people will still look back and say, they passed on a franchise quarterback two or three years later. They're still looking for one. They don't have one. Imagine where they would be long-term if they had one of those guys. So if you're a Giants fan and you're Dave Gettleman, you hope to God that every single quarterback in this draft ends up being a bust. Because if they do, you look like a genius. But if they don't, and a couple of them end up becoming franchise guys, I don't care what anybody says, good draft class or not, you still end up looking like a damn fool.